Um, there are two parts in the name of my lecture. One is a more general introduction, what does the literature say about that? And the second part is more an insider perspective in um, how uh, the representation was created. So when you say an insider perspective, because I was myself concerned during many years with these debates in Berlin. And uh, after having been silent for many years about this, I think it's more or less time now to say how I see it and not only how others, academicians, I am also an academician, uh, described it and sometimes wrongly described it. Um, so, uh, let's begin. And uh, if one day you want to work on the representation of Islam, there will be surely also other interesting books. Well, one of the good ones, in my, in my impression, is Jonathan Lawrence, a book of 2012, The Emancipation of Arabs and Muslims, The State's Role in Minority Integration, Princeton University. So if you one day have to work on that for most of you, the whole thing, go there. He didn't study Belgium but you do some other countries in Europe. And what is interesting in this book is that uh, you see that some things everywhere in Europe come back, even if I can say you that there were not contacts between the different countries. Because it was very rare in the 90s that, for example, people working on that in Italy or in France, on the same topic, eh, inside the European Union, working on the same thing, took contact with one another. It was very rare. <coughs> it didn't happen so much. Nevertheless, if you look in the developments, you will see some similarities. There will be a reason for that. Okay? Uh, what he says is, uh, all the time give my comment from a Belgian point of view, what he says, at the beginning, Western European countries in the 90s sought for moderate legitimate interlocutors <coughs> with an emphasis on moderate. Uh, it was not the radicalization issue at that moment. The radicalization issue as we know it today is something from, let's say, 2012 on. But it was the brotherhood issue in the nineties, huh? the Ihuan. The brotherhood issue was very present in that discussion, but also elsewhere in Europe, okay? Because he is right, that's true. At the same time, there was also the idea of um, these people are not longer immigrants anymore. Um, they are citizens. And uh, there was a debate on equal opportunities. So that's why, for example, from uh, Center for Equal Opportunities, I was concerned with that in this debate, because it was also about equal opportunities, okay? Um, what was one of the problems? That's, if you want moderates, um, you can ask the people, are you moderate? You can ask the Muslim leadership around you, we want moderates, but everybody will say he is moderate. Now, you understand the problem? Uh, I never met someone who said, you know what, I'm an extremist. Okay? So, who decided? This was the problem. Uh, in a sense, one hoped that there should be found a consensus among Muslim communities to propose that they should propose what they call moderate leadership that should be accepted by the governments. Because, don't forget that the state has not the right to impose, to code, who will represent the country. You cannot, as government, say, well, uh, that's a theory, that's a theory, what I say. Right? And you cannot say to a community, uh, Catholics, Anglicans, a Jewish community, I don't say, listen, we are looking for moderates, and that's how we see it. You, 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 you will be the council of moderates. It doesn't work like that. You have not the right to do that. The Constitution forbids it very formally. Okay? 
So the problem was you had to enter in discussion with the communities and say, listen, there is a problem group we propose as a representative for the leadership. Okay? Now, there are two books on that that discuss that, and, but, and we will check that who is right, who is wrong. I let it to you at the end. Cesarie, Josephine Cesarie, who is a quite well known uh, Isabologist, writing on the topic, says that um, in order to keep the creation of the body representing Islam under its control, the government followed its own path and in 98 organized elections, the government organized elections among Muslims to establish the Executive Council of Islam in Belgium. You will see in the second part what, in my opinion, really happened, and I let it to you then to judge. Raad, Jan Raad, but discussing the Netherlands, has another point of view. He said, the final form taken by Islam be considered to be the result of concentration and conflict between all kinds of involved parties. It's a bit different. So what he proposes is there were conflicts, there was concertation, and a compromise was found. And that's the point of view. There's not a government that imposes, but, you know, dialogue, discussion, and so on. We will see that. I repeat, I let it talk to you. Then another thing, uh, Lawrence says, well, the solution in Belgium was found in 94. From then on, we have really a decision on who will represent the Muslim communities in Belgium. Then again, I let it up to you afterwards to judge. If it's really true, just be careful sometimes with publications. Okay? Um, and then, which are the watershed years? Lawrence will say, and he speaks for the whole of Europe, the watershed years are 89, and the second time, 96, 98. Uh, what do I mean with watershed years? The years that seem to be very decisive, that change a bit the register in the discussion. And, and there he makes an interesting remark, <coughs> He says that are moments that are confrontational events, that are confrontational events in the international arena. Because if he is right, it means that, okay, there is a discussion, and what permits us to make a step in the discussion, what changes a bit the process, are international facts. It's things that happen at the international level. Okay? Then, okay, you, you may forget that, you may find that. You see, every country has, at a certain moment, I don't know from which country you are, you can have a look for your own country. Every country you see in the 90s, but also in 2000, from 2001, a lot of countries, three, four, five, six, found a solution, found somewhere a solution, okay? And then there are also other countries where, and that's very strange, a distinction is made between old Islam and new Islam. What do I mean with that? Uh, these are countries, that's Greece, for example, that's also Romania, who say we have Muslim communities already for centuries, that's one thing. And then you have Muslim immigrants. That's another thing. And the status for both is different. There's a different status for the old ones, let's say the Tatars in Poland, for example, and a new situation for, for example, people coming from the Maghreb. We don't put them together. Okay? Because there are quite different uh, solutions. Okay, um, yeah. 
These are output uh, literature, so you can, if one day you want to control it, you can do it. Okay, which are the points in the discussion? Which are the arguments, which are the interests in the mind of the Western politic politicians looking for a solution? Which is the thing that they want to solve? I repeat, things that they want to solve. I don't say that they solved it. Hmm? But what did they have in mind in the 90s, beginning of the 90s, when they started up the discussion? As said already, they wanted moderation. Second, they wanted to bring state mosque relations out of the embassies. Very concretely, if you have uh, people from Turkish or Moroccan provenance in your country, traditionally the embassies had an impact on them. They said they are also our citizens. The government said, no, please, they are our citizens. And in many cases, it is double nationality, as you know. And then the discussion was, yes, but they stay here. It's not normal that Turkey, for example, should uh, impact on how Muslims are organized here, it's our country here. So please remain in Turkey, please remain in Morocco. Because the intention of the governments everywhere in Europe was to say, listen, remain outside. That's our affair. You see? That's a step from migrant to citizenship. Okay. I don't say they solved it. Huh? Um, and then the model they had in mind is, is a model of the Jewish communities. Because in the Jewish uh, communities you had also a lot of tendencies. You had the Orthodox Jews, you had the liberal Jews, you had a lot of. Um, so they said, that's may, that may be a good model to apply also to our Muslim communities. Lawrence speaks also of the model of the working class. Honestly, I never heard it, at least not in Belgium. Just to, to organize it, you know, working class and capital, and then uh, find a representation eh, to discuss around the table. Honestly, I never heard it. Jewish communities, yes. And for example, also a second thing in Belgium was uh, the Protestant communities, where you had uh, communities coming from the 16th century, 17th century, and 19th century. There's the evangelicals from the 19th century, and the reformists, Calvinists, Lutheran, Protestants, which are quite different from one another. And there the idea was, how do you put them together? Let us look for a common uh, leadership. Good. Well, result, only I take uh, uh, a quote from Lawrence at the end of his book, result everywhere in Europe, the solutions of the different European countries are experienced as imperfect institutionalizations. So who complains about Belgium should know that everywhere in Europe one speaks today about imperfect institutionalizations. Good? Now, the facts. I take uh, uh, three of three people who participated in the debate. One was a Muslim, a convert, very, very typical. The converts had a huge impact at the beginning of the 90s. At the beginning of the 90s. That's the difference with today. Because Bayens was a spokesman for the Muslim communities in Belgium, end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s. And at the end, he wrote his memoirs. Uh, and I take this as a, uh, a source. Another one was Jean Allais, who participated also. And a third one are my personal archives that I gave to Kadok here in Leuven. By the way, it is very interesting, not, not, I don't say that these archives are interesting, but what is interesting is to see how much you forget. What is incredible. 
Dus wanneer ik rek mijn oude uh, notes, devies, apps van from the 90s, I was surprised myself. Oh, this, this happened. It's incredible how much you forget. That, that's uh, okay. Um, so, and starting with this, and we make more or less the same analysis. That's a happy thing for me. We make more or less the same analysis of, of what really happened. But you can read them if you want. Let's start from the beginning in Belgium. First thing, know there is freedom of religion in Belgium. If you want to go home and to create your own religion, it's possible. You will not end up in jail. In worst case, maybe in psychiatry, but not in jail. So you have the right to do that. You may make your own chapels, your own. That's the freedom of expression, also in current affairs. Good. That's the constitution. But there is a distinction made between what is called recognized religions and the other one. A recognized religion is a religion where the state says, oh, for us, this is a privileged partner. He will have some rights, and of course also some duties, and there will also be some financing. Those are something as an agreement. Okay? At the beginning, the first uh, recognized religions in Belgium, 19th century, were Catholicism. Protestantism, Anglicanism, okay, Jewish. Uh, and then in the 20th century we had also uh, Orthodox with a complex discussion because one didn't know at the beginning that there were many Orthodox churches. So can you put the Arabic Orthodox together with the Romanian Orthodox, with the uh, Serbian Orthodox, and so on, and didn't know. Eh? And, uh, but okay, we're a recognized Orthodox Church, okay, and then, as we will see, in 74, 74, uh, Islam was recognized, okay. Already in 69, the keys of the Eastern Pavilion, which was not built as a mosque, that's what one calls the Great Mosque in Brussels, Park de Jubilee, Jubel Park, was not created as a mosque. It seems a mosque, if you see it. But it was not. It was a, a building, Eastern Pavilion, and in 69, the keys were given to Faisal of Saudi Arabia. Why? I was not there. What one tells me, because this was the beginning of a lot of problems afterwards, eh? What one tells me, what one told me afterwards was, yeah, Mecca is in Saudi Arabia. What one doesn't tell, but what I guess was also present, was the oil crisis. Okay, there's these two arguments, and thus King Faisal came and uh, we gave him the keys of uh, this, uh, is what is called nowadays, Islamic Cultural Center. In 74, Islam is recognized. A principle of organization by province was established by law and already from 64-65 Islamic religious courses were provided in the public education system. Okay, thus Islam was taught in the schools. 1980, the Muslim World League obtained the largest share in the management of the ICC, of the Great Mosque. <coughs> what is the Islamic World League? What is the Islamic World League? Let us say, there is some autonomy vis-à-vis -vis Saudi Arabia, but Saudi Arabia is quite present in it. <coughs> what means also that Wahhabism is quite present in it. We have to be realistic. Hmm? Was given. And they were educated, and as a mission, it was told to the Imam director that he is the head of the Islamic communities, but not definitively. Thus, it was told to him, listen, we give you this thing, this mission, but please 
give us an alternative in a very short time. Okay? It says if you give to a professor a mandate, say we, we, you are nominated, but please find immediately someone else to take your place. Okay, that's what, what happened. Huh? And indeed, he never proposed someone. The provisional head never proposed. You know. But what was in, in mind was, yeah, we cannot propose ourselves, so if we ask to someone from inside the Islamic communities, we are correct, and he will propose an alternative. Good. As nothing happened, in 85, it was Minister Goal, if some Belgians know him. Uh, Minister Goal, uh, who was Minister of Justice, said, okay, it was, you know, Goal was a quite uh, rational, impulsive man at the same time. He said, well, nothing is coming, I will make it myself. Huh? A bit also with the problem that he was Jewish, by the way, because it didn't facilitate uh, anything. Eh? So, he, uh, he should have organized the Islamic communities in Belgium in 85. He proposed something, but the Council of State reacted. There are insufficient reasons to claim that as far as the Islamic religion is concerned, articles, articles 18, 19, 19 bis of the law of 1870 authorized the government to establish a body for the representation of all the Muslims in Belgium. Thus, shortly said, it's not your affair. You have not the right to organize it in the place of the, uh, of the region. So, 85, nothing happened. But of course, this becomes part then of the dossier, also for later solutions. As if afterwards you propose other solutions, one will say this, well, you know what the council state says. Hmm? Good. 89, Abdallah al Ahdal, who was then the Imam director, was murdered. I don't know if you were, uh, who was the problem to know if you were already born or not. But, um, you were already born, but he was murdered. <laughs> so you, you couldn't know him, he was murdered in the, in the mosque. Remember the watershed years of uh, Lawrence, Jonathan Lawrence. He says 89. There we are, 80, 89. And the reason was Salman Rushdie. What happened? Uh, he refused to condemn, to make a fatwa against Salman Rushdie. Why I don't know. I know I knew the guy already. Um, he, he was, a, in my view, a moderate one. So he wanted, I think, to, to say, okay, we, we have a discussion with Belgian authorities, so I will not start now with a fatwa against Salman Rushdie. But he was good. Okay. Um, yeah. 89. Islamic, there's a new Imam director, Samir al Radi, who's a bit more radical than uh, El Ardal, and who understands that a solution should be proposed, and he gathers people around him in the central mosque to start up the discussion. Now, I have to say at the same moment, it was the Royal Commission for Migrant Policy, where I was a member at that moment. And, honestly, we had the same proposal, more or less. Because there was not really a, a uh, how to say, we worked separately, but after, you know how it works, you call people uh, from different associations, different mosques, you ask, well, what are the possibilities? He did the same thing, I think. And, and we had more or less the same solution. At that moment in Belgium, in the Islamic world, the leadership of what was presented as such at that moment said, well, let us organize elections. 
some general elections among Muslims, okay? And after these elections, the Muslims, we will see who has most votes. And among the people who have most votes, one will make a council. This was the idea. Thus, elections as principle. <coughs> Second thing, there was really no difference between the position of the Royal Commission and uh, the ICC, the, the, the great mosque, Samir Radi. But he did politically a mistake. At the same moment, he started an Islamic school in a French community. Now, I don't know if you follow politics in Belgium. But if you want to start an Islamic school, do do it in the French community, where you are very close to the laïcité ID of France, and surely in that period there. So immediately, some ministers and others say, oh no, he, he, he is a person who has a hidden agenda. He has something in mind that we don't know, and he will organize elections, he will manipulate that, and that he will Israel make, he will create Islamic communities that really escape to us. Okay? Uh, but he, he prepared elections. By the way, this is 89. Lawrence will say 89 everywhere in Europe. Are, well, it's a watershed here. And I think indeed that the important thing there was Salman Rushdie, the satanic verses. I think this was, the, this was a shock. Okay? The fatwa, you know, Khomeini. Eh? Good. But the Belgian government refused the result of the election. They said, listen, first they said to him, do it, organize, was the first reaction. Let us first discuss. He referred to the advice of the Council of State. He said, why should I wait? Because look, the Council of State in 85 says, that's my right, not your, surely not your right. So I continue. Second political mistake in my view, but it's subjective. Hmm? He should have waited. Hmm? Uh, but that's an appreciation. Uh, but he continued. And it ended a bit in a bad way, you know, when you have a confrontation and this confrontation becomes very public, does the media know it, everyone knows it, then you have a position as who is losing face. Is the government face a uh, losing face vis-à-vis -vis a Saudi Imam director? First, Scenario, government didn't want to do that. Second scenario, he was a Saudi, and Saudi maybe stopped born, and he didn't want to lose face vis-à-vis -vis Muslim communities. The result was that the government decided that he was not our provisional head of the Islamic communities, so there was no one head of the Islamic communities. There was no one. At that moment, we are speaking of 19. I have to say there was also a reaction against the. But that's why did the government, yeah, why did the government uh, refuse it? They feared lack of transparency. Second, and this is really also true, there was lack of agreement among Muslims at the proposed formula. And third, there was a strong opposition of embassies. Turkey, Morocco. Strong opposition, uh, do, do that. You know, at that moment, the dossiers become mixed. A dossier about Islam becomes a question of also, also of NATO and of other things. As if you, you enter in a thing that you have no solution anymore. Hmm? You see? There were five alternatives proposed. Two from Muslim associations, then the embassies, and two coming from political parties. First was an Islamic Federation of Belgium located in Antwerp. That, and this was very surprisingly, 
proposed that the government should simply appoint 12 members, as is known in most Arabic countries. This was the argument. Is known like that there in, uh, in Arabic countries, so why should you change the formula? But the better government could do that. Or the constitution doesn't permit it. Okay? Two, some Muslim intellectuals said, listen, make something, make different commissions. Make an education commission, a mosque commission, and a representation for the social cultural Islamic associations. So do make one head of cult, yeah? but make three commissions and they have their own authority and their own powers and let them work. This was the second uh, thing that was proposed. Three, the Turkish and Moroccan embassies said, well, they have double citizenship, so they have also our citizenship, so it is our affair. Two, we have experience with the Muslim world. You have no experience with that. We know what you do, you don't know what you do. Okay, that was the second argument. And they say, we are a guarantee against extremism. Because we know what, what is happening. Okay? Maybe all these people today will not say that they did that. Eh? But that was a reality in the 90s, in the beginning of the 90s, believe me. Hmm? Um, then there were two solutions proposed during government discussions. That's to simply make a council for each province. To say, well, Limburg is not a thing, Westland is not a thing, Austrian, and so, you know, a bit deviating for that. No. It, there will always be provinces where it is okay. So, let us try it in this way. And then there was the Parti Socialist, PS, who said, well, we have a condition before you find a solution for Muslims, we want first a solution for the dossier of laicity. In Belgium, laicity <coughs> is a religion, has the same status. And they wanted laicity to be recognized just as Catholicism, Protestantism, as the, the, the laic -like ideology. And then their solution was also solve the problem per municipality. Just concretely make the mayor, ask the mayor to organize Islamic communities in its own territory and that's it. But you see immediately the reaction of other people, for example Christian Democrats, who feared that if you do that with Muslims, you can do that in a, in a further moment also with uh, Catholic, uh, Catholicism and all of them. So that was yet. Thus, the elections are there. The Minister of Justice suspended the royal decree. And then, yeah, what to do? And Belgium looked to France. In France, at that moment, there was a minister, Pierre Jox, who proposed a conseil de réflexion sur l'islam en France. There's a committee for the study, for the reflection on Islam in France. And since the we had nothing here, one made something similar, a provisional council of wise men for the organization of the Islamic religion in Belgium. Who was put in it? A bit, I should say, civil society. Also trade unions, for example. And three seats were for the ICC, for the Great Mosque. The ICC refused and informed the mosques that they refused. So you can predict what happens. This council of wise men had simply no basis. No. It was a council that was there, and, but the mosque refused. They couldn't even enter a mosque. Because the ICC had said, and the Islamic leadership had said, uh, listen, uh, we don't participate to that. 
What do trade unions do in the organization of religion? By the way, it's true. Huh? Okay? And, um, good. Well, one found an alternative at that moment. And the alternative was, because we understand the problem, there were teachers of Islamic religion already from 75 on. So who nominates these teachers? And these teachers should be paid. So one needed something for the courses of religion. And what was made then? A technical committee for education matters. Uh, this was the result, I think, of the mediation of the Center for Equal Opportunities. At that moment, I know very well who did it, who contacted again the, the ICC, the people who organized the elections, who looked for a compromise, you know, also with government, what may be at the end, and at the end there was a compromise, an autonomous technical committee for education matters with as chairman, as president, Bayes, who was the spokesman in 89 for the committee that wanted to organize the elections for the great mosque. And this time it was accepted by the government. Well, they're not necessarily the same ministers, eh? but, but the times were also changing. Okay? 94. And then in 94, this became an executive of Muslims of Belgium with restricted powers. Because one started up with education matters, then the second thing was why not jail? Consultants for jail. Another thing was why not also in the hospitals? This one went step by step. So we had an Executive of Muslims of Belgium with restrictive powers. And that's what you find in the book of Lawrence as the Belgian solution. 94. Okay? 94, 15, 98, we enter again in watershed years. What uh, meaning at the international level things are happening again. Things that make that Everywhere in Europe, government say, no, 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 we, we really want to find solution. Hmm? Okay? 98, in Brussels, this, this executive discussed, all of these were monthly discussions eh, at the Cabinet of the Minister of Justice. Every month they came together to be able to discuss. And to say this uh, restricted powers, that's not equal opportunities. Eh? That's not that's a restriction of the rights of the people. So let us find something more definitive. And what do we see as the definitive proposal in '98? Elections in 104 mosques and 18 public places. Why these 18 public places? Because there was at that moment a debate also in the Muslim communities that not everyone goes to the mosque. I'll give you an example, the Alevites in Turkey. And one said, plus there were also other Muslims who didn't want to, do, to register in the mosque, and then one said, okay, uh, 18 public places, uh, schools, where you go as for the other elections. Okay? A total of 48,000 registered voters, that's a lot, you know, 48 voters of what? No, 70,000 <coughs> registered and 48,000 want to vote. You know, for some people, it was the first time in life that they voted. I remember very well that period, it was the first time that some Moroccan people voted was not for general election in Belgium, but it was for the Muslim. And for many of these older people, this was really a... <sighs> we vote. Hmm? That's 98. 
Okay? Well, we are not at the end of the story. Uh, afterwards, there was an agreement be made before the elections. And the agreement was that there should be a screening by the state security. What was the object of the screening of the state security? It was membership of Brotherhood or not. Now, honestly, the best organized ones in Belgium were the Brotherhood. You have to say the reality. In this world, there are, if there is something very good organized, uh, I should say the Brotherhood, and then in the Turkish community, the Anet and Miligur, for, for this kind of things. So they were very dominant. They, they, they have to say it, before the election, they could say, oh, you vote for this, this, this guy. And so these were many Brotherhood people who had most votes. And the state security, haha, of the Moroccans, candidates to become member of the executive of 17, of the 19 candidates, 13 were refused. You see the psychological effect of that. 19, 13 are refused. There are seven places and there remain only six. Does it was given the Moroccan backing? Okay? Among the Turks of the 14, nine accepted, five refused. But then it was okay because one needed only seven Turks. Hmm? Belgians also two refused. And then the others, because these were the categories at that moment that were made. Moroccan provenance, Turkish provenance, converts, and other provenance. Other provenance means, for example, Senegalese, Balkan, Albania. Yeah, you see? Okay. Big discussion. 7th February, there is a head of the Islamic religion with 17 members. Because one could convince the state security to pass someone from the brotherhood category to the other category. Now, by the way, how, uh, if you want to avoid state security, uh, how it works? If there is a complaint about you, it remains 10 years in the file. So you remain 10 years in it. And if you are three times in the file, at the same moment, there's no objection. That's the way it works. With some, uh, now, there is there a whole debate. What is a complaint against you? Because you can also be victim of gossip. <laughs> can be if you, you can be someone who says, "Well, this one there, I will uh, make that he." There's a mark <coughs> and him, uh, among the state security. But at the end, 7 February 99, we have a head of the Islamic religion, which is different than the one in 94. It is still called executive, but the powers are different. Because he has another authority. And he is the result of elections. The technical committee and the first executive was not the result of elections. That's what Lawrence said to be the, the, the Belgian solution. There are important differences. Other powers and another system. Uh, the only thing that is the same is the name, executive. Okay? Then, in 2003, but this is normal now, uh, uh, one third of the newly constituted executive was dissolved. Oh yeah, I have to say something of, about these watershed years in 2006-2009. Uh, uh, a typical thing in Belgium at that moment, and the older people among you maybe remember, is uh, the Lupna Benaisa case. And it was a case of pedophilia. And a Moroccan girl was a victim of that. And it was, this was a moment, a bit of general shame in <laughs> Belgium. 
and say, well, uh, you know, this was a very present in the media, and then this girl was to be brought to Morocco for the funerals. And, uh, and there was a general climate, you know, in Belgium to say, it cannot continue like that. Okay, because it was what in politics is called a momentum. In the right moment to, to do something. Good. Thus, 2003, one third of the composition has changed, but that was normal. This was the agreement from the beginning. Okay? But it didn't work really. There were cases, people who were refused, who went to the tribunal, to the court, claimed that it was not correct. So there were a lot of, you know, it was a big event. It didn't work very well, this whole executive. Good. And then only from yeah, and what didn't facilitate things were 2001, 9-11. Eh? That, that's not the moment to say in, after 9-11, no problem for security, no problem for screening. Eh? So the, this was very sensitive. Uh, you know, international things interfere in that. Eh? Okay, and the terrorist attacks in Madrid and London. And it is, let's say, between 1999 till 2007, the executive functioned, but in a very, you know, functioning and not functioning. There was something. The imperfect solution. Okay? It became a bit more quiet from 2007 on. And in 2008, a new Minister of Justice asked the Islamic Executive to start up a reflection. As he said, listen, it doesn't work very well, please propose me a new solution, another solution. That still may be called Executive, but that works a bit better. Okay? And there was a discussion about Two options. One option was, okay, let us again organize elections. The, the former formula. The second option, and it was the winning option at the end, was let us stop it with elections. Let us simply call all the mosques to propose one candidate. And when are you a mosque that can participate if you have 200 members. That's it. All mosques with more than 200 members were invited to come together and everyone should propose a candidate. This should be the general council. This general council should then make a, another an assembly of some 52 people and this assembly should then propose 17 uh, <coughs> members of the executive. Now, and then you have, you know, people may be very creative. Eh? One, one, one wanted to let all these ethnic distinctions, the, these ethnic things behind them, eh? uh, Turkish, Moroccan, convert, and so on. And one found another solution, the word most, most category A, most category B, most category C, and all wonder, most category uh, are all Moroccan, category B are all Turkish, and C are the others. But there is no longer ethnic distinction. It's only A, B, C. Okay? But well, if people, if this may be a solution or not, eh? good. There's 70 members, 15 are proposed by the mosques. Brussels proposes six candidates, Flanders five, Wallonia four, and they co-opt two members for their qualifications, for their qualities. Okay? And they agreed to do that for six years. Okay? Because if you have an executive, it is for six years. That is what they proposed to the Minister of Justice in 2008. And then indeed, there's a whole 
reflection took many years. In 2014, the executive transferred its competences with the agreement of the government and in presence of all former presidents of the former executives to the newly structured ABC executive. Thus the name remains the same. When we look for a large, uh, uh, thing as large as the page is as large as possible, just also the former executive presidents are invited to agree with that. Okay? They come together and then April 2014, there is a royal decree indicating 17 members. Uh, there are three councils in this executive, a council of theologians, a council of arbitration, and a council of coordination of the Islamic institutions of Belgium. Now, you should know the following. First, the head of cult, official head of cult, is, has as its competence the temporal, what's called the temporal. He has no moral and no theological authority. Okay, that's the law. So he is only, uh, his competence is to discuss about which mosques will be proposed to the authorities to be recognized and to be financed. Those material things. And that explains that they make a council of theologians to have people that may have some moral. To, to, so they can say one day, for example, you know, we as executive, uh, our council of theologians proposes this or that. That's the idea behind that. This is also of arbitration, that is, if there is a problem, who will, who will solve it? Huh? And then a council, it's very interesting, the Council of Coordination of the Islamic Institutions of Belgium. Aha, who is this? This is, for example, Janet. This is very Gurish. If there are terms here. Meaning, these are very well organized institutions, and today, with the current AP party in Turkey between Diyanet and Uyghurish is more than the same. Eh? The difference is not that. that uh, so you have a very strong Belgo-Turkish lobby here in the Council of Coordination that has more authority for the Turks than the executive. Because if the general director here takes a position <coughs> yeah, that, that's a position and that's uh, valuable and uh, has its validity in, in the Turkish communities and so you have you see this is an important thing this is a, let me say that's a very balanced solution but you see it works if it works does the people agree to work together it may function it's, I have to say, I find it personally very clever. You know how you see it. I find it very clever. But there is one condition, of course, that the people should agree to work together and not continuously criticize one another. Okay? By the way, and that's not a detail, and we are going to the end, in the meantime, with these imperfect solutions, the state finances 700 teachers, Islamic religion. That's not a detail. It finances 20 mosques and imams. It finances nine councillors working in jails, consultants in jails. So it's an imperfect solution. But if the perfect solution should be there, we have a problem in a grassroots level. Okay? Final questions, now we go to the literature. Is this a solution imposed by the government? 
just if you look to hold this thing, who is right? Is it Cesare or is it Rat? In my opinion, it's Rat. Because it is a story of conflict and looking for compromises. I do think you can say this is a solution imposed by Belgian government. That's not true. In my opinion, you may have another advice, another, another idea, but for me, that's not what happened. Then, uh, is it the 94th solution, the 99th solution, or the 2014 solution that is the organization? Lauren says it is 94, but you can discuss, you can say it's 99, you can say it is 2014. Okay? What do I mean with that? Maybe you have a reality that is, in, that is moving continuously. Maybe even this is not the final solution. Maybe even this is part of the process of an immigrant status to citizen status. Okay? The watershed years, 89, 96, 98, yes, yes. But there are still other watershed years later with 9-11 and, uh, and all. But what is true, international, what happens in the international and international level seems to be very important to push governments to take decisions. That's true. Not the format of the solution, but the fact of doing a step, making a step. What is the impact of embassies? You know, the objective at the beginning was to avoid that embassies should still continue to be in it. I think that this failed. I think that the reality is that the embassies, embassies are very present, still very present in the whole process. This is Janet is, Janet is, is uh, I mean, the Turkish community is uh, under the direction of Turkey. And really good is, if this is so close now to the other degrees that two very important federations are maybe Orion more to Turkey than to Thailand. No. I'm not present, but you see the problem. Eh? Okay? And what about Europeans? It's a label of Islam. Well, you see, what for me is lacking still nowadays, and it will be something Islam will have to solve in the coming years, is that to make something European. Because we need, uh, you know, there is a council of theologians in Belgium. What we need, but will not be easy, is something where at the European level, at the transnational level, some common decisions, some, some, some common projects are proposed.